Today we're going to talk about special orders. Uh, we're going to go through the special order cycle through anthology. At first I'm going to go through a PowerPoint slide. Then I'm going to go to anthology, give you an example, a simple example of that, the cycle through an anthology. And then I'm going to go through a more complicated uh, cycle through an anthology. So let's get started. When you, oh, we are using the classic statuses uh, today. Um, there are the new statuses that you can work with. That actually has a fairly profound effect on how special orders works. We're not going to be working with that today. We're using the classic statuses. Okay, so looking at the cycle in your bookstore, starting from the start, you're going to have a customer who comes in who asks for something you don't have, and you're going to want to place a special order. So then you're going to want to order that particular item from your vendor, and you'll place an order. Then that item will come in, and you'll receive it. You'll contact the customer to let them know that it's in, and then you'll sell the item to the customer. So it'll cycle through your store that way. Let's take a little closer look at that. The cashier uh, takes the customer's book order at the cash register. And what we're saying here is that it, we are focused on the cash register rather than, say, the customer order module. The book buyer orders the book from the vendor, so it's on a purchase order. And then that order comes in, so the receiver now goes ahead and receives it. The customer gets notified that the purchase is in, and then it's sold to the customer at the cash register. And I'm saying sold, I'm making a point of that for a reason. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. So here it is, as you understand it in your store, now here it is in anthology. So where you were taking that, that, um, the order for, from your customer, you're doing that in the cash register. And when you go ahead and place your order, when you organize that as a buyer, and then go ahead and purchase it and, and purchasing, that's the CBO manager and the purchasing module. Once it comes in, it's coming into receiving, so now you're in the receiving screen. When you go to contact the customer to tell them it's come in, you're in the CBO manager. And then when the customer comes in and you go to sell them, you sell the item to them, you're back in the cash register again. So that's the cycle through anthology. So let's talk about what you're going to be doing in Anthology. We're going to go through it a bit, and then we're going to go into Anthology and actually do it there. So we're at the cash register again, and we're taking the special order. When you do that, you want to enter the customer name in right away or as soon as possible when you get the name in there. Select F5, take SPO to let the cash register know that this is a special order. You want to find or enter the ISBN number. Now, if you already have the ISBN number in your system, this is easy. If you don't, and it's common you don't, you need to find it, and that can take a little bit of time. You want to determine the deposit. Now, the deposit might be zero. You may not be taking deposit at all, and anything up to 100% or prepaid. So determine what that deposit is, then go ahead and take the tenders and complete the sale. If you go to the CBO manager, you'll notice that the SPO status now is needs order. The next step will be to go ahead and, and bring that order together as a buyer. You're going to build that order up. So you're going to go ahead um, into the CBO manager, organize it so that you find the needs order. Now the needs order are those items, those special orders, that are not on a purchase order yet. And so you want to get them on a purchase order. So you're going to select the needs order and then hit F12, send to PO. If you don't have a PO already to send it to, you can go ahead and create a new PO. If you do have a PO, go ahead and, and select the PO you're building, send it there. Click on F12 Select, so now you're done with the CBO Manager screen and you're on the Purchasing screen. So in the Purchasing screen, you're going to hit F10 Save. Okay. Know that Anthology is going to link the PO number loosely uh, to this special order. And I'm going to explain that in a little bit, too. So once you've saved it, the SPO status will now change to draft because it's on a PO. It hasn't been ordered yet, but it's on a purchase order. So then you'd finish your purchase order as you normally would. Some buyers are starting with their special orders and filling in behind. 
Some buyers are creating the orders that they know they need to, to place today, and then they're going out to their special orders and tacking it on to the end. So whatever you normally do, go ahead and do that. You want to go ahead and purchase the book. So you want to either post it or F6EO. When you do that, the SPO status changes from on you know, to on order because now the SPO is on order. And you'll find that um, item on a purchase order in receiving. Okay, so now it's in receiving. The item's going to come in. You've got your receiver's hat on now. You're going to go through your receiving process as you normally do. Uh, and then you're going to go ahead and post it. When you do, the status is going to change to in. Now, you have a choice about when you do some of these steps. You can do them after the post or before the post. It's up to you as to which one you feel most comfortable with. If you're doing it before the post, you'll be on the open receiving memo. If you do it after the post, you want to be on the shipment record. So in any case, whichever place you do that, you want to print out a CBO report so that you can go ahead and contact the customer. And then you want to print out an SPO wrapper that you can wrap around the book and then organize it behind the cash wrap. If you do that, if you print out an SPO wrapper, the status will actually change from on hold, from, from in to on hold. The benefit to this, when it says in, it could be anywhere in your store. When it says on hold, you know somebody printed out a wrapper so more than likely, they pulled the book, and it's now at the cash wrap. You want to contact the customer. So you're going to go to the CBO manager uh, and contact that customer and let them know. You, you will use your CBO info report, take notes on it, also put notes in the CBO manager. So you're going to call, email the customer, etc. And again, you're going to take that book to the cash wrap, organize it as it needs to be organized. The customer is going to come in, having been notified, wanting to pick up their item. So you can use the customer name uh, or the title on the wrappers. However it's been done, you can go ahead and, and check for that, pull the book, take off the wrapper, and scan the barcode. So notice how I didn't say put the name into the cash register. Don't need to do anything in the cash register. Just go ahead and take off the wrapper, scan the barcode on the book. When you do that, a pick SPO screen will come up, and you go ahead and pick the customer that, that's standing before you, and all the information surrounding their SPO is going to come into the cash register. You're going to hit F3 Take Tenders, and when you do that, you're going to notice if there's been a deposit, that the deposit's now going to come up. You're going to see it on the screen where you didn't before. You're going to go ahead and complete the sale, and when you do complete the sale, the status of the SPO is going to go to complete. And that's the cycle. So let's go ahead and go back to that again. Um, we're going to do a simple cycle, but let's go ahead and do that in anthology. The first thing you want to do is put in the customer name. You want to do that as early as possible. So I'm just going to grab a name. And the next thing you want to do is go ahead and enter in a <coughs> the book that they wish to special. I'm sorry, before you do that, hit F5, take SBL, let the cash register know that this is a special order. Now you want to enter in the ISBN number. So I'm going to go ahead and find the book that they're looking for. Let's see if I am going to have to search for it. So let me go ahead and do that. OK. So this is the item that they wish to order. There are no on hand, zero on hand. So I need to um, place an order for that for the customer. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. It comes in on the left-hand side, automatically goes over the right-hand side. You can see it says SPO as its type. And it's taking a 50% deposit. This has to do with the setup behind the scenes. I have it set up, so it's going to take 50% deposit automatically. Do you have to do that? Absolutely not. If you decided on a percentage, but you would like to change it, no problem. You can do that, too. So if the customer wants to pay a little more, a little less, and that's OK store policy-wise, go ahead and make that change. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move forward with this. The next step here is to hit F3 Take Tenders. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select the tender the customer is paying the $7.50. We'll just say check. Okay, I'm going to click on the Enter line. And what you're going to notice here is that two receipts are going to print out. I'm going to click on Complete. There's the first one. There's the second one. 
again, I have a paperless printer, so we're saving a paper here, but you're seeing that information come up. In, on your side, what will happen is the drawer will pop, and the um, receipt printer will print out two receipts. Now, that's an option. Again, the, the training copy is set up that way, but you don't have to do that. You can have it print out just one or more if you desire. So that's definitely a setup question. Go ahead and press any key to continue. Now that transaction is complete. And if you look, go to the CBO manager and look for that SPO, it has a status of needs order. So let's go ahead and look at that. So we're done at the cash register. We're going to go into the CBO manager. When we do that and we look at the bottom, we'll see <clears throat> there's a wishing year and there's the status, needs order. Okay, so now it's in the system and everywhere through the system, you're going to see that Michael Clark special ordered a wishing year. Okay, so the next step here is to go ahead and purchase this. So now I'm the buyer, right? And maybe I've gone ahead and, and I've created a, a purchase order and I've just come here to grab those special orders you know, at the end here and throw them out. Or maybe this is where I'm starting. So whichever way that's going to work, you want to go forward from here. I'm going to keep it simple this time through. I'm going to just purchase this one so it stays clean throughout the system. Okay, I'm going to hit F12, send to PO. I'm going to hit F4, new. You can see it comes in. Now it's giving you a message here. It's saying, Please press F5 when you return to the CBO screen. It's saying that because the CBO manager screen has not had a chance to refresh and the statuses will not be current. We don't want you to be confused, so when you get to the screen, hit F5, and then the statuses will update. Okay, so here the question is, who am I ordering it from? Now, I probably already know that by this point, but if I didn't, I could go to my internet stock and see who has the book. So you can see I have a number of people selected, number of vendors. And now I can go ahead and pick from whomever I feel I have the best discounts with um, that I'm most likely to get it in. So let's go ahead and do, I'm just going to pick one. So we're going to say Ingram, ING, enter, <coughs> enter again, Ingram comes in. Okay, we're following the steps that we normally would when we're doing a, a simple purchase order. Step number one, tell them, tell you what it is that, you know, from whom you want to order from. And, of course, that's Ingram. Step two, tell them, tell you what it is you wish to purchase. Step three, hit F10, save. Okay. Now, normally, you'd be putting more on here, but we're going to just track this one. If I were the buyer, I'd be stopping to ask, I'd see this, I'd be stopping to ask, does Anthology think that my draft PO fills this special order? If there's an icon here, chances are the answer is yes. But you do want to cross-check it because there's you know, little circumstances that can cause that to show up when the answer is actually no. So if you go to the info panel, to the CBO tab, and you go over to the status, you'll see that the status here is draft and it's on PO number 28, which is mine. So I know as a buyer, I need to get this in. This is the purchase order that fills it. I need to take care of it. Okay, so step number four, go ahead and order it. Either hit F6EO and click on Send Order or click on F12 Post, which is what we're going to do. We're on PO number 28. So yes to post, no to print. <clears throat> PO number 28 goes away. Okay, so now where is it at? Of course, it's in Receiving. We're going to go ahead and go to Inventory Control and go to Receiving. I'm, you can see my um, receiving memo here for Ingram, PO number 28. I'm going to click on the Details tab. Now, if I go to the CBO Manager now, I can see that the status is open. Before it was draft, now it's open. And that's because I posted it. If I go to the CBO Manager screen, I'm going to see that it's on order. Okay, so you know it's on a PO, it's been ordered, and you're expecting it to come in. Okay, so now I'm the receiver, and I'm going to go ahead and do this receiving as I normally would. So the first thing I'm going to do, you know, packing slip, check everything is okay, bring the packing slip to Anthology, put in how much is received, check, all, you know, and, and I don't have a discount yet, but check that information in, click on the enter line. Now I can see I don't have a discount here, so I probably would want to put that in. So I'm going to put...
Okay, so now it's at 41%. Um, that, so step two, check my statuses and my CBOs, and I can see, yep, here I have a CBO. As a receiver, it's always my responsibility to cross-check and make sure that my receiving memo is the one that fills this order. Depending on the size of your store, if you have somebody else who's also working on other receiving, they may, it may be theirs and they may be pulling it, so you want to be careful. But I'm checking and I see that it's PO number 28. It is mine and I want to take care of it. Now right now I'm just noting that. Or I may stop right now and, and email the customer if I've set that up. So let's talk about emailing the customer. If you use Outlook, not Outlook Express, but Outlook, you can go ahead and, and you have the email address in Anthology, you can go ahead and email the customer to let them know their special order is in. So what I can do is go up here to this little mail icon, click on it, and you can see his email address comes in automatically. Now this is supposing that you've already gone into the template and you've tweaked it the way you want it to be. We're going to go ahead and select the special order notification template and generate. So now it's taken the special order, combined it with the template. This is now an email you can send out. Dear Michael, the wishing year is in. Please don't hesitate to call your favorite store. Send. So now Michael knows. So that's a pretty quick thing um, that you can do to contact the customer, but again, you must have Outlook to do it. And you also need to be on the CBO tab uh, so that Anthology knows that it's the special order that you want to do. You're going to go through the rest of the receiving. You're going to go to Actions, do Vendor Invoice Information, fill in the information that you know. etc. Whatever information you know, go ahead and fill that in. Check to see that it balances. It does. They're the same. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. Step 4, hit F10 Save. Now at this point, I could stop and you know, work with that CBO before I hit F12 Post. And often in training, that's exactly what I recommend. Take care of all the things that need to be taken care of before you post it. You could wait until after the post and then go onto the shipment record and do uh, work with your special orders from there. Okay, so I'm here now. I'm going to hit F11 Print. Now, if you have a CBO on this receiving memo, the CBO info report is going to show up no matter what. But the SPO wrapper is only going to show up if you have a received quantity. So that's why it's important where you're at and at what point. So let's we'll start with the CBO info report. I'm going to go ahead and select that. When I do, I have some options here. I can organize this by customer or by item, so it depends on how I'm going to approach this. Whichever one I've selected, I could say I want a page break. The idea here is to get a printed piece of paper that has just one customer name and everything they've special ordered or just one item per page, and then you can stick it in the book. And the wrapper does a better job of that, but you can do it this way if you'd like. Now, we have a checkbox here that says print notices for received items only. I'm going to suggest that you make a decision here about selecting this or not. There's no right or wrong answers, but you need to be consistent. It's the jumping back and forth, one time selecting it, another time not, that gets people into trouble. So if you select it, you're saying, I only want to um, print out a report for those things that I've received. If you have any special orders that are back ordered, and you know, you hope that's not the case, but if that's happened, and sometimes it does, then you could have a problem when you go to do this the next time and you don't select the checkbox. People will either over pull and over call the customer or under pull and under call the customer. If you're consistent, you don't run into that problem. Okay, let's go ahead and print it. So what you're seeing here is a report. It has Michael's name, all his information. There is his telephone number. There's his email address. You're seeing the name of the book. Even the price is there. You know, so you can give the customer some good information. And now you can print this out and take notes. Called on X day, got busy signal, left a message, talked to daughter, whatever. Um, and then you'll know then what's going on with that, you know, with the customer coming in. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, go to the SPO wrappers. I'm going to click on F12 Select. 
Now, the STO wrappers are an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper that you're meant to wrap around the binding of the book and then possibly use a rubber band you know, to hold it on there. And that way you can organize by either the customer's last name, which you see printed there, or the title of the book. You have your choice. And you do have the customer's phone number, so again, easy to go ahead and go through that, you know, the line of books and pick up the phone, and you can see it's Michael and who the phone number is at a glance. Pretty quick and easy. We do have a barcode on it. That has the SPO number on it. That's what that barcode represents, not the ISBN number. So be careful about using it. There are certain features in Anthology we're not going to talk about today, but there are certain features that use that if you want to. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and print it so that it changes the status to on hold when I'm done. So I'm going to print that, and then I'm going to go ahead and post. Okay, PO number 28 goes away. So that's done. You know that there's now PO that's complete, and there's also a shipment record for that. We're going to go ahead and, and leave receiving and go to our uh, CBO manager. So sales. CBO manager, as the receiver or perhaps as the person responsible for special orders in your store, however that's handled, somebody needs to come in and put in information about that. So I've got Michael here, the wishing year. I can put in notes about contacting them, when I did, what happened, coming in on Saturday, etc., and the date that I notified them so that anyone else coming in behind you will know what's going on. If they get a phone call from another family member wanting to know, what, you know what's happened with it, people you know, know what's happening with this special order. So you want to come in and fill in that information. And you can also continue to co contact the customer. You can also do your emailing from here if you wish to do that. OK, so now the customer comes in. All right, hi, Michael. Glad to see you back again. Let me go ahead and grab that book. You take off the SPO wrapper. You go ahead and scan it. Now notice I have not put his name in or anything at the cash register. So I'm just going to go ahead and scan it. And up comes the pick SPO screen. So there's Michael. There's his deposit. And when you see the SPO screen, it's important that you're picking the right person because you wouldn't want to give somebody else Michael's deposit. So we'll click on Select because that's going to come up you know, regardless if you scan that barcode at any time, that pick SPO is going to come up. Um, last of the item, honestly, if you're doing special orders and they wanted to have, to have more for the shelf, they would have ordered that and brought it in. So <coughs> chances are the answer is no. <coughs> OK, you can see P slash U. So you know that Anthology knows that you're here to pick it up. Um, so you're, this is, has to do with the special order and not directly a sale, $15. What you're not seeing is the deposit right now. Now the customer is going to hopefully buy other things, and you're going to go ahead and add that to the transaction. I'm not doing that so everything stays clean and you can see what's happening. But at some point you're going to hit F3 take tenders. And the reason why I'm making this point is that people will often come over here to the total and tell a customer how much they owe, and in which case they might get a little upset because they gave you a deposit, and now they think you don't have it. If you hit F3 take tenders, the deposit shows up. You can see the 750 over here. That's why you come over here to the total due. You read what's in red. That will be $8.40, please. And then go ahead and take your tender and complete the transaction. So it's going to go from on hold to complete. So if I click on the complete button here, so I'm selling it now, pressing the key to continue. If I go into the CBO manager, you'll notice it's not there. I can't see it. But it is still there. It's just not being displayed. There's a checkbox, Show Completed Items checkbox. When I select it, the item comes back in. And there's Michael with what he purchased. Okay, So that's a complete, simple cycle around through SPOs. Any questions about that? Yeah, Robin, you know, what happens if I put the book on a purchase order and it gets back ordered? Does, uh, does the customer record follow the back ordered title? Well, it, it might. The issue when you're using these statuses is Anthology is going to move it to the, to the PO that's going to bring it in the earliest. 
So if you end up having another receiving memo with that same item on it that comes in before this one, then Anthology is going to switch it to that. So it all depends on where it's at in the system, you know, if it's a draft or it's, it's an order, you know, if, if it's in, so you're saying it's in, but that particular thing got receiving came in, but that got back ordered. So chances are it's going to stay with that receiving memo unless another receiving memo comes in that's going to show it's going to come in before, and then Anthology will uh, take on that, the receiving memo, the other one that's coming in sooner. Okay, so that's what we want oh, to do. Oh, that answers my question. Okay, good. Okay, let's start going through this again, uh, talking about a few more details as we go. So we're back at the cash register, and we're working with uh, taking special orders. Customers come in, and they're looking for a particular book, and you don't you don't have it. So you want to get the customer name in as soon as possible. If you're if you already know this is going to be a special order, go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and grab a name. And then you want to go ahead and find the book. Now, if you think you're going to have problems, so the customer says, oh, I, you know, I kind of remember the title. I don't remember the author. But boy, if I could see the cover of the book, I'd know right away that it was the right one. Okay? You're not going to use anthology to find that book. Someone wants the third edition published by whomever from this year. Again, you're not going to do that in Anthology. But if you have something that's pretty straightforward and you want to go ahead and, and use Anthology for that, that would be a good thing to go ahead and do at the cash register. So with that in mind, you want to go ahead and click on your ellipse button so it brings up your inventory assistant. Now, um, let me go ahead and choose something here. Well, let me use this one. So let's say that someone's looking for the girl with the dragon tattoo. Okay, so I'm using keywords. I can type in a few words here and not have to worry about it. If I was doing title description, I'd be a little more concerned. I could use author, by the way. What I'm going to do is super fetch. And I'm using Bowker to do that. Now others will have super uh, will have fetch, web fetch and super fetch. Um, capabilities, but right now only Bowker has keywords, author, and title description search through Superfetch. So I'm going to click this button, and so right now Anthology is communicating with Bowker, and Bowker is looking for those records, and when it finds it, it's going to hand it off back to Anthology again. Okay, so we can see there's quite a few records down here, and in fact, um, we're seeing that there's some records that that possibly didn't are not displayed on this screen, um, but we we can sort of by title description and look for the book we're looking for. If this gets too complicated, we can always go. Uh, well, we can do by uh, title description. That will narrow it down. But we could also go to another source if we think that we can't find what we're looking for. Okay. So the girl with the dragon tattoo. The next question is, what? Uh, media does a customer want it at? So I might be looking at that. I may also be looking at the pub date. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. And I can see, let me scooch this just a little this way. So now I can see a little more information. Um, they're looking for the trade paperback. That's probably the right one. So if I wanted to cross check that, I could, and it just depends on how busy you are and how much time you have, but you can click on Internet Stock Check and click on F6 Availability. And even if you're not ordering right now, what this is going to tell you is do you have a good ISBN number? I mean, if you had the library ISBN number by accident or the Spanish edition, you might not see very many numbers here. But you can tell by looking at these numbers that you've got the right one. I mean, if Bookazine has 2,000 of them, and you can see that Ingram has plenty, OK, we, we've got the right one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on Cancel here and select that one. When I do that, now I'm seeing the record. So the clerk taking a special order needs to be able to handle the screen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll put in the subject, which is showing as fiction. Eventually, Anthology is going to learn you know, what you, when you have fiction slash suspense, what you put in. So I'm going to go ahead and select Fiction General. And it already learned that when it says trade paper, that I want paperback. And it put that in. 
Okay, so I'm going to hit um, F12 select here. I mean, sorry, F12 save. Okay, I'm going to say no here. Now, it came in not as a special order, and I can change that very easily. All I have to do is click on it, F5, take SPO, and now I can see it's changed to a special order. I can deal with the deposit any way I need to. So let's talk about deposits. It may be that you don't want to take a deposit at all. And if you normally do that, you're going to set the setup behind the scenes to zero, and that's what this will be. Or you know a percentage, or the customer says, oh, I've got a $10 bill on me. If the store policy is OK, you put $10 in, no problem. OK, so let's, um, let's talk about prepaid. Sometimes people, stores, offer uh, a prepayment. So if you, you can go ahead and prepay it, and then when the customer comes in, it's very quick and easy for them to pick it up. If you want to do a prepayment, and in Anthology's world, prepayment means the, the full sale price plus the tax. And what I'm seeing, of course, is I chose a customer who's not taxable, and you're not going to be able to see it. So I'm going to switch it to resident. I'm going to make this customer taxable. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and calculate that prepayment. So it's going to be the full sale price plus the taxes. Okay. I'm going to go to Actions and then go down to Prepay. And when I do that, now you'll notice that's exactly what Anthology did. I'm going to show you a different set of steps you can use. Uh, again, if you want to do a prepayment but you don't want to use your mouse, you can use your keyboard. If you hold down your Alt key and hit A twice, it will do the same thing, pretty quick and easy. Okay, so now I have my prepaid deposit that would come in. So that's how you do a prepayment. Let's say that this one's actually going to be a zero deposit. So I'm put zero here. Now it's showing it's a special order, zero. This is the next thing that confuses clerks when they're taking this, because they say, oh, I'm not taking any money. Well, what do I do next? You still hit F3, take tenders. So hit F3, take tenders, of course, because the total is zero, Anthology automatically brings up the complete box. So if we go ahead and click on complete, here's one receipt, here's the second receipt. Remember, that's our setup. Press the key to continue. Now that one's in. OK? So that's searching for a book, bringing it up, and then not taking any deposit on it. Now that's in the system, anywhere you see it, it's going to show that it's a special order you know, waiting for that person to come pick it up. OK, let's see. I'm going to do one other, and I'm going to do a prepayment on it. Let's say that you have gone to another source, and you have found um, an ISBN number from that other source, and you want to bring it in to Anthology. Let me see if I can grab something here. OK, so when you found the ISBN number from a different source, you're going to come into the ISBN SKU field and type it in here. But of course, you're going to hit F5, take SBO first, because you want to tell Anthology that it is a special order. So it went and found it. So we're going to say yes here. And now you can see the book. So whenever you've gone outside the system, you've gotten the ISBN number, go ahead and put it in the title description. I'm sorry, put it in the ISBN SKU field and hit Enter. It's going to go ahead and try to fetch it for you. So we see Into the Wild. We can go ahead and, and enter this in. Uh, it, other information is already being learned, so it's filling in for me. I can go ahead and click on F12 Save. I'm going to hit F5, take SBO, and click on the Enter Line button. So it's come in as a special order, and it's in. OK, now what I haven't done here is I haven't taken the customer name. If I want to complete this, Anthology is going to go ahead and squawk at me. So I hit F3, take tenders, and it says, hello, stop. Customer must be specified. Oh, OK. And the customer assistant comes up. Now I'm going to go ahead and select a customer. So now we have Sue, and now I can go ahead and take a check, or take whatever um, that they're going to go ahead and pay. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, reverse the tenders back out. I'm going to cancel them, and I'm going to make it into prepayment. So how do I do that? I've already got um, my deposit here that's half, and I want to go ahead and change it to a prepaid. Of course, I edit it by clicking on it. 
that brings it back over the left-hand side. I click on the deposit field. I click on Alt-AA. It's now changed. I click on the enter line. Now I've got a prepayment. See, so I've mentioned this in cash register, but you can see the cash register is very flexible. You can make changes. Never panic. If you've got things going on, you can go ahead and fix it. Step number two is hit F3, take tenders. Now go ahead and take the tender they're going to pay with and complete the transaction. Okay, now that we've taken those special orders, let's go ahead and, and take a look at them in the CBO Manager. If I go to Sales and I go to CBO Manager, and I scroll down towards the bottom, I can see the two of them there at the bottom of the screen. Both of them needs order. That's what their status is, needs order. If I click on the item status, all the statuses come together, and you can see all the needs order are together. And now if I want, I can multi-select and send this to a purchase order. Before we get started talking about ordering this, I want to also make a note to the, to the buyer that when you're on this screen using the CBO Manager to manage your special orders, to keep an eye on your drafts. Now, draft means it's not been ordered yet. So it's sitting there waiting to be ordered, but has not been ordered yet. So you want to pay attention to that in case there are items out there that actually need to get ordered in and now have gotten waylaid for whatever reason. So you might want to check your drafts and see where they're at first. And then go to your needs order and work, work with your needs order. And the way I've shown you is to go ahead and multi-select F12, send the PO, but in fact it's not the only way to do this. It's perhaps the easiest, the simplest way to do it, but it's not the only way. So let me talk about the two other ways that you can go ahead and get this on a purchase order. One of those ways is to go to Inventory Control and click on Generate Purchase Orders. Now we don't have time to go through this screen, but the short of it is you can go to the Generation method, select Customer Back Orders Only, and Anthology is going to go through and check all the items, all the inventory items that have special orders associated with them. If I generate now, it's going to give me everything. Things that are in, things that are on order, things that are on draft, needs order, the whole slew, they're all going to be on there. And for some people, that's exactly what they need. The people who said, why don't you automate this more? But different people approach this different ways, and then they get frustrated when it's automated. So you do have some checkboxes here that will help you. If you select quantity on hand, anything that has an SPO status of in will now be taken off of this. So quantity already on order, if I selected that, that's going to clear out everything that is on order. Everything that's on draft, if I select that, now nothing that's in the draft will show up. So the only thing that's left is needs order. You still want to be careful. You still want to cross-check to see what's there and make sure that you're comfortable with what's been generated. But this will typically will get you what, what it is that you're looking for. Choose a vendor. If you're not familiar with this screen, it's a good way to go. The others are going to create a lot of purchase orders, potentially. If you choose a vendor and pick a one specific name, it's all going to go to one PO. And then later on, when you're more comfortable with this screen, you can go ahead and learn these other options here under Order From. Okay. So that's another way to handle bringing in, you know, getting those special orders onto a purchase order so that you can go ahead and order them. Another way to do this is something you would have set up beforehand, meaning it's not retroactive. It's from this moment forward if you decide to use it. So you can go to Tools and go to Options and select under the Special Order area to Add to PO. Now when you select Add to PO, Anthology is going to go to your external data screen and find who your default distributor is and put it on the first PO of their PO that's out there. Now if you don't, if this distributor does not have any purchase orders in the system, you have not selected any, then Anthology is going to create one for you. So if it says Baker and Taylor, it's going to look for the, um, the earliest Baker and Taylor PO, put it on that. If it doesn't have a Baker and Taylor out there, it's going to generate one and put it on that. So that's how it's going to work if you choose that particular method. Now I, I think that that's a little bit of a loose cannon in my world. So I'm not as comfortable with that, but certainly there are plenty of booksellers that are. So that's a viable uh, option to use. 
Notice while we're here, the other information for special orders, here's where you set your default deposit, okay? and here's where you choose how many receipts get printed out when you print out your SPOs. So that's all here. Okay, let's go ahead and close that back down. Let's go back to the original method we talked about. I'm going to go ahead and go to Sales, CBO Manager, and I'm going to click on the statuses. So I'm bringing them all together. Now, let's go back to this issue of uh, the different statuses besides needs order, for instance, like draft. If you're working with this and you're saying, oh, I wonder what PL this is on, I've got a draft, I can look at it. There's a column in here that will show me that information, PO number 26. I can also use the info panel at the bottom. I can click on POs. I can say, you know, see drafts, opens, my choice. It filters at the bottom, and then I can see what POs it's on at all times. Even completed ones, I can do that. I can come here and see where the completed, what PO the completed one was on that it got filled by. Okay, so let's go back and get our needs order. I'm going to go ahead and multi-select this. And then, so all I did was hold down the shift key, click on the first one, click on the last one, selected the whole group, and I'm going to click on F12 Send PO. If I'm building a PO, I can go ahead and select that particular one. I can click on F12 Select here. Now before I do that, um, PO number 26 is not open at this time, and I can tell Anthology, oh, go ahead and open that for me. Jump to PO, and then click on Select. So we give it a moment, and then you can see that it opened up PO number 26. It's the Ingram one. We're going to take a look at that in a moment. Again, our message, if you look at the CBO manager, uh, the statuses are not updated. I'm going to click OK here. If I click on the CBO tab, I'm bringing all the CBOs together so I can go ahead and take a look at it. Hit F10 Save. Now, if truly I was the buyer having done this and I hadn't been working with PO number 26, but I sent it there, I would be going through this and cross-checking to see what I had. I'd be verifying what this order was about, and I would be using the CBO tab to go ahead and clarify you know, what PO Anthology thinks is filling this, et cetera, and doing everything a buyer would normally do. Okay, so we've got a lot on here. I would also say that um, I would not want some of these to have allow back orders on. And so, um, oh, hang on. This might do the whole thing. Instead of just some of them, let's just give that a try. Yeah, we're just going to do the whole thing. And that's fine. So then you can go through and, and work from it from there. But as you can see, you don't want to allow the back order statuses on there. Uh, you want to go ahead and bring those in. OK, I'm going to go ahead and save this. You can see these are on the draft. If I close this down, you see how the, the CBO manager screen is on here behind this. I'm going to hit F5, make sure that everything is updated, and I can see that now my items are saying they're on a draft. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and place my order. I'm ready to do that now. So go back to my Ingram, hit F12 post. I'm on PO number 26, print no and it's gone. Okay, you know over time those, those items are going to come in. We're going to go back to receiving again. Inventory control, receiving. We're going to go through the receiving process for PO number 26 as we normally would. And we don't have time to do that today, so I'm going to do what I usually never do. I'm going to receive all. And of course, normally I'm going through this checking every line, making sure everything is good before I move on. So that would be step number one. Step number two, I'm checking my statuses, I'm checking my CBOs. And of course, if I'm the receiver walking in on this one, I'm going to be on the CBO tab. I'm cross-checking to make sure everything is good, and it is. Okay. Then I'm going to do step um, three, which is to go to Actions, Vendor Invoice Information, put in what I know. Go ahead and select the date. So that's done. I'm going to hit F10 Save. So again, this is the moment in time. I can hit F3 
I'm sorry, F11 print and choose my CBO info report. Uh, doesn't matter. We're going to preview it, and now you can see the listing of it. So I did it by customer. So I can go ahead and call the customers and let them know what came in. This is closer to real life when you have quite a few special orders on there. So you're going to print these out and go ahead, take notes, contact your customers in the way you're most comfortable. Again, remembering that you can also email them. So your SPO wrappers would be the next thing. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. And I'm going to go ahead and post it. So now I didn't print out wrappers, so you're going to notice that the status is going to change to in. Do you want to post this? Yes. Do you want to print no? 26 goes away. If I go back to my CBO manager screen, instead of on hold, it's going to be in. So I, you know, I don't know quite where it's at. I know it's been received, but I don't know um, what's gone on from there. No wrappers were printed, so I don't know where it's at. Okay, customers are going to come in at some point, right, looking for their uh, special orders. So we're going to go ahead, go back to the cash register. Let's do the first one. So we take the wrapper off the book. We go ahead and scan it. You can see that our Pick SPO screen comes up. We're going to go ahead and select Sue. Notice how it says P slash in the background. So I'm going to say no here. I'm going to hit F3 take tenders, and then I'm going to tell Sue how much she owes, and you can see that it's zero. Remember with prepaid, you still need to go ahead and put it through the cash register. When you took the order, you took a deposit. And we didn't get a chance to see this, but taxes were zero. We took the taxable amount, but we didn't label it as taxes. We labeled it as an order. Remember that you have to have an inventory item go out the door to charge sales tax. And when you take the special order, you don't have that. Well, now you do. So when you go ahead and process this at the cash register, now the taxes are being taken and the sale is being recognized, etc. So you do need to run through the cash register. And this is the only way Anthology knows that the special order has been complete as well. So we'll go ahead and click on complete. Press any key. Now that one's done. OK. let's. See, I have to remember what the other one was. I did too, right? Let me just grab the other one. Oh, yes. Okay. So again, taking the wrapper off if we have that. If we don't, just grabbing the book and scanning the barcode. Pick SBO screen comes up. They didn't put any deposit on this. F12 select. It comes in. P slash U. I hit F3 take tenders. They do owe the whole thing. I go ahead and take their tender. And I complete the transaction. Press any key. Close it down. When you go to look at this in the CBO manager, again, of course, it's not showing there. But if you select show completed SPOs, you'll notice that they're there and they're complete. OK, any questions before I wrap this up? OK, so I'm going to go ahead and Yeah, that's OK. <laughs> you know, I have, a, I have a couple questions, uh, you know, but not, you know, just n not specific to what we covered, you know, here. I think that I, uh, this has been uh, obviously very bene beneficial. So. OK, I'm going to. Go ahead and stop here.